I've earned more than $14,000 in the last few months by doing nothing but just moving some digits around on my computer. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to copy me step by step because no one has explained this very well and it's, it's past due for an explanation. I do this by lending out my crypto in a very particular way. So we're gonna take this all piece by piece from how the system works, the potential risks of the system, the most efficient way to do this all. I've actually spent hours making spreadsheets for this because I'm kind of a dork and uh, I wanted to make a, a nice detailed spreadsheet. And I'm just, you know, we're just gonna have a complete guide on, on how to do all of this. You can just follow, follow me and make some money. That's all you have to do. Also a quick portfolio update. I post all of my crypto buys for my Patreon members. We are currently up 104% for all of my buy alerts since I started in June, almost $100,000. So for those wanting to get in, I have added a few additional spots. So if you've been waiting, now's the time to grab one before it sells out yet again. You'll get buy alerts, a private community and a whole lot more. Now let's go ahead and jump right in so I can show you how I'm making 30% reliably. Hopping over to my phone here just so you can see as a preview real quick. If I click assets, you can see total interest right there, $14,666.19 so far. Just do a quick preview on how I lend from my phone and then we're gonna break this down much more in depth. You simply click crypto lending down here, lend USDT. I already have it lending so we'll just disable for now. You put in the reserve amount. This is how much you wanna keep without lending it. I usually keep this at 10,000 for some liquidity. The amount of days that you want to lend out, this is the lending term. I usually just do seven days. I'll explain this all more in depth later. The daily interest rate, we're gonna do a fairly low interest rate because it does auto lend. It'll lend it at a higher rate if the prevailing rate is higher. So we're gonna just do 0.06% for now. Again, this will all be explained more in depth later. Enable auto lend. And there you go, it is now lending and I am making profit every single day. It's amazing once it's set up. It's a little bit complicated to get to that point. When I, when I started doing this, there was no good resource on how to do it. So all of this is a result of a whole lot of trial and error that you just get for free. So most of the complication in this system is actually getting funds on KuCoin because KuCoin unfortunately doesn't allow you to connect your bank account directly. And we're gonna cover all of this. First, let's talk about how much you can actually make by following this process. So we're gonna hop over to this compound interest calculator. So we have $1,000 in here. This is the current prevailing daily interest rate. This varies all the time, but this is the prevailing one. We're just gonna do a one year time frame. We click calculate. So that $1,000 turned into $1,377. So the effective APY is 37%. And the reason for that is because you're earning interest on your interest. So you can see in the first month, you might earn $27 in interest, but by month six, you're earning 30 and so on. And it really just scales up from there. If you had $10,000, this scales up dramatically you would make $3,700 in profit. So $270 in interest made on your very first month. Now, how do we do this? First, you need to make a KuCoin account. I'll have that link below. If you use that link, you'll save some extra money on trading fees and you'll just be able to do this a little bit cheaper. After you have that set up, you'll need to have a way to fund your account. And again, KuCoin unfortunately offers no fiat support, meaning you can't connect your bank account. You need to send crypto to this account. Now you can use a credit card to fund your KuCoin account, but the fees there are 5% and we can do a whole lot better than that. So the two best ways to fund your account, to fund your KuCoin account, are by going through either Coinbase or Binance. But the best option depends on a few factors. This is where this is where the spreadsheets come in. So let's take a look at this calculator. This breaks down every single transaction that needs to happen in order to fund your account and then bring that money back. So it's full circle, making your interest, getting it back because you need to know the fees on the whole trip. If we mess around with this a little bit, right now it's on $2,000, the amount invested, and the daily interest rate is 0.08%. So we can see at $2,000, the amount you spend in fees on Coinbase is $54, and it's $50 on Binance. But if you have $100 that you're investing in each, the fees are significantly cheaper on Coinbase. Now, if you jump it up significantly higher and say $20,000, 
the fees are significantly better on Binance. So this is where the discrepancy comes in. And because of that, I built this chart out even further. And by the way, if you appreciate my efforts here to save you your hard earned money, consider hitting that like button. And if you're feeling extra generous, consider hitting that subscribe button. Now let's look at these, <laughs> these break even points here. So we can see that around $1,500 is the break even between Coinbase and Binance. If you're depositing more than $1,000, if you're lending more than $1,000, it makes more sense to go with Binance. If you're going less, it makes more sense with Coinbase. To visualize this even better, look at that, even better chart. So the blue is Coinbase, the red is Binance. And we can see this is kind of the break even point right here, just over $1,500. And beyond that is when Coinbase becomes more expensive. So the higher one, is the worst one in this case. And once you get over about $2,500 and beyond, it's much better to use Binance to fund your account. And we can see that here, if let's say you're lending out $25,000, it takes only three days to break even on all fees through Binance, funding through Binance, where it would take 15 days with Coinbase. So this is very significant if you're getting up there in the numbers. Now, you might be looking at this and thinking, well, I only have a couple hundred bucks, I'll never break even with these fees and start making that juicy passive profit. Well, I have good news for you. If you plan to continuously add to your position, it can still make sense to do this even if you have only a couple hundred bucks. And this is because the largest fees are incurred when you're pulling your money out. The the, the opposite of real life where pulling out is usually much cheaper. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so, so we have a second chart here that really explains this. So if we only count the fees to go in, to, to bring your money into KuCoin, let's say you're building up your lending account here, the fees are dramatically lower and the barrier to entry is far lower. So we can see the amount invested here at only $200. If you use Coinbase, it's only $1.20 to get your money onto KuCoin, start lending that and start making money where on Binance is actually significantly more expensive. So we have this chart built out here as well, which you can take a screenshot or whatever you wanna do if you wanna take a look at this more closely. Um, but we can see just to put the funds in there, no matter what, because there's no flat fee on Coinbase to get the funds into KuCoin, it's always 6.8 days to break even at the current lending rate, at the current interest rate, where Binance has flat fees, so it varies a little bit. So with this, if you're just considering putting money in and you want to build up that account, the break even point here is around like $5,000 where Binance begins again making sense. But if you want to just do, you know, a $100 addition here or there or $50 here or there, then Coinbase is absolutely the way to go. And we have a, a visual here as well where you can see uh, the break even point. Again, the higher one is worse in this case. So you can see around $5,000 is when Binance starts making sense. Again, below that Coinbase starts making sense. So now let's do a summary here real quick of Coinbase versus Binance and getting your money into KuCoin. So Coinbase is best if you're doing less than $5,000. Binance is by far best if you're doing more than 5,000 and the higher the better for Binance. Hold times for ACH. So both of these, if you're depositing from your bank account, have hold times. Coinbase is between three and seven days. Binance is 10 days. You want to consider this as well. Your ACH limits are $25,000 for Coinbase. You can bump this up to $100,000 and Binance $5,000 and you can bump this up to $50,000 potentially. Wire is available for both of these if you want to wire funds in, but you're looking at like another $30 fee to do that. So that only makes sense if you're up in like the $25,000 range. Uh, the KYC, you have that for both Binance and Coinbase, no avoiding that. And then sign up bonus. Coinbase, you get $10 in free Bitcoin for signing up. Binance, there's no sign up bonus, but I'll have both of these linked in the description for whichever one is best for you. Okay, now that you know which funding method is best for you in order to fund your KuCoin account, these are the steps on how to do so. Feel free to screen shot this if you want to, but we're going to cover this step by step as well. And then we'll get into the lending part and the tactics and the potential risks. There are small risks here because nothing is risk free, but we're going to get into the nitty gritty details. Now let's first do lending from Coinbase and then we'll do lending from Binance. So first you need to fund your account with an ACH or a wire. So we're gonna go over to Coinbase Pro. If you have a Coinbase account, you can also make a Pro account and the fees are slightly cheaper here. So I highly recommend it. It's just pro.coinbase.com. So you're gonna go ahead and fund your account. In order to do that, you just click deposit USD from your bank account, the amount that you wanna deposit. Then you need to wait for your funds to settle that's three to seven days. Once they're settled by Bitcoin, all you have to do is click up here, Bitcoin to USD, however much you wanna buy, let's just say $1,000, you'll click buy order and you are good to go. 
Now we need to withdraw the funds to KuCoin. So you can go up to Portfolios up here, click Withdraw. We're going to be withdrawing Bitcoin to a crypto address. And then you're going to go over to your KuCoin account, click Assets up here, Main Account. And then we go to Deposit, Bitcoin. And we want that going into our trading account. You copy this address here, go back to Coinbase, paste in your address in this box, just verify, double check that it all lines up, the amount that you wanna send, which is probably the maximum amount that you just bought, and then you simply click withdrawal. And then the funds will land in your KuCoin trading account. So they'll be sitting in your trading account. Now we need to transfer from Bitcoin to USDT because that's what we're gonna be lending. In order to do that, you go up to trade here to spot trading. Make sure this is Bitcoin to USDT up top. If it's not showing, you can just type in BTC up here, Bitcoin slash USDT. Then on the bottom right, I'm just gonna do a market order just for the sake of time here. The amount of Bitcoin that you are looking to sell, if you don't know the exact amount, you can just click 100% here. I have $100 of Bitcoin in this account. And then you just click sell Bitcoin and it'll transfer that from Bitcoin to USDT. Now you have USDT in your trading account. You want to then transfer that to your main account. So you're gonna to go to your trading account, the asset that you're trying to transfer, you click transfer, you simply transfer that to your main account. And now we can lend, but first I'm gonna explain the Binance version to get to this point and then we'll break down the lending. On Binance, it's quite a bit more simple. So we're gonna go up to wallet and then deposit. Once you're on this page, you're depositing USD into your account. You're gonna type in the amount, deposit from your bank account, and then you'll have to wait for those funds to settle. They take 10 days to settle on Binance. Once they're settled, you can then buy USDT with your US dollars that you just deposited. In order to buy that, you just click that buy crypto tab. Here you type in USDT. Type in the amount that you wanna buy. And then you just click preview purchase click confirm, you are good to go. Now you need to get that money onto your KuCoin account. Now, in order to do that, you click withdraw. We're gonna be withdrawing USDT. Make sure you always have the correct type of coin here, both on the withdraw and deposit. Now you need your USDT address. So in order to do that, we go over to KuCoin again. We go up to assets, main account, and then we go to deposit. USDT, make sure it is the correct account. We want it landing in the main account this time. Note which one of these is on. It should just be on ERC20, which is fine. You'll copy your address here. Go back over to Binance, paste in your address in this space, verify it, double check it, the amount that you wanna send. Make sure this ERC20 again lines up with KuCoin. You click submit and you are now funded on your KuCoin account. Okay, now we have our funds in KuCoin, in USDT, in our main account. I know this is confusing. Don't, don't feel bad if you have to watch through these steps again or watch it in slow-mo. Don't feel bad, but now we are here. We're funded, now we need to lend out our USDT. And in order to do that, we go up to Finance, Crypto Lending, Make sure you're on USDT right here. And this is kind of the order book. This is current offers to lend out USDT on this marketplace. So we can see the lowest offered rate right now is 0.89%, which is 32% annualized. That's the lowest rate right now. Lowest, it's absolutely bonkers right now. Now this will vary a little bit. I've seen this as high as 100% and I've seen it as low as 5% and it'll kind of trend in certain directions. So about two months ago, it hung around 5% for about a month. It's been ramping up dramatically ever since then and we'll probably see it higher than 32% within the next month or so as of the recording of this. So in order to lend, Always do auto lending because what happens is you lend out your, your money for a set term, but people are able to return it early. And if you don't have auto lend set, they're gonna return your money. It's not gonna be lent back out. You are not utilizing the full capacity of your money if you don't have auto lend on. Reserve amount, this is how much you wanna keep in your account that isn't lent out. I like to always just have some liquidity on the side just, just to have liquidity in case I wanna buy something. So I'm just gonna do 10,000 reserved on the side. I always do seven days here because the difference in rate between seven days and 28 days is so small 
and yet 28 days is so much longer to have your funds potentially locked up if you need to pull them out or whatever. It's better, in my opinion, just to have seven days. Now, the minimum daily rate, this doesn't matter a whole lot because how the system works, it has this priority interest rate where it will just it will just lend at the prevailing rate. So you'll always get the best rate possible. So if you have this at half of whatever this lowest rate is, and you have some funds that come up ready to lend, it won't lend it at the low rate, it'll lend it at whatever this prevailing rate is. It's a great system. So I like to do it just slightly lower than this lowest rate in case things drop down. So we'll just do 0.06% here. Then you just click Enable Auto Lend, Confirm, and you're good to go. You're lending and making that juicy profit. So if we go to my lendings, we can see again my $14,000 in realized profit so far, and I have $447 that is accrued but hasn't yet been sent to me because it's still in funds that are currently lent out. Now, of course, we need to talk about the risks. So what if you lend out money and they don't pay it back? Well, luckily here, KuCoin has an insurance fund. So how it works is you lend out your assets, 15% of your profits get taken out. 5% goes to KuCoin, 10% goes to an insurance fund. So I've been lending out my cash on this platform for months now, and I've never actually seen the insurance fund activated, which, which means to me two things. First, that their system works well uh, to return the funds before there's actually an issue. And second, maybe the insurance fund is a little bit too expensive, but I'm, gl I'm glad that the insurance fund is there. I, I've never not received my funds back. I've never not received the interest, which is great. Now, the second risk is USDT. There are concerns that the stablecoin USDT isn't quite as stable as they say it might be. More and more over time, it's been shown that Tether, who is supposed to back their USDT one-to-one -one with the US dollar, in fact, holds a lot of commercial debt and may not have complete reserves. A lot like the regular US dollar, but that's, that's neither here nor there. But if Tether were to collapse, this would be bad. This, in my opinion, is the largest risk here. However, I do look to a few things. First, these complaints about Tether have been around for at least five years, as far as I can tell, and nothing has changed. Tether is still around and they're still operating and it's used basically everywhere. And second, if you think Tether will totally collapse, then all of your non-Tether crypto is also at risk because so much value in crypto is derived from Tether as a base as a trading pair. So if Tether goes down, it's bad for absolutely everything, not just Tether. So that is a potential risk that you'll wanna consider in research. And because of this, I'm personally comfortable lending out a portion of my cash, but I'm not gonna lend out my life savings just in case, you know, never put all of your eggs in one basket. Just always do your own research as well. Now, final question, can we trust KuCoin? And I can tell you about my experience so far. So I was very skeptical about all of this before I made an account, as you can see by all my spreadsheets and how in depth I've looked at all this. I don't wanna lose money, okay? So after doing a lot of digging, I couldn't find really any complaints. So I went ahead and made a jump on making an account. And I was pleasantly surprised at how the team handles things. Plus, I was glad to see that they have like 8 million users. So it isn't like a tiny underground platform. But of course, again, please do your own research as well before trying anything. Don't just take my word for it. Do your own due diligence as well. So that's it. That's how I reliably make 30% interest on my crypto. It's pretty exciting. And I sincerely hope that this helps you earn a few extra dollars. And also, if you want to join the Patreon and get things like buy alerts, even more money making content in a private community, check that out link down below. I'm sure there's still a couple spots still left, but make sure you snag one before they are all gone. And I would just like to thank you so much for watching. Thanks for tuning in and I hope you have a profitable day.